So they're at it again. Activist group Just Stop Oil disrupted day one of the second Ashes test between England and Australia at Lord's Cricket Ground. Two protesters ran onto the pitch, throwing orange powder into the air before being tackled to the ground by players and stewards. Fans were fuming and England wicketkeeper Johnny Bairstow even took matters into his own hands, removing one of the protesters himself. Joining me live now is Jane Toole from Just Stop Oil and cricket journalist and broadcaster Jared Kimber at Laws. Let's go to Jared first. Jared, your take on what you saw today and what happened? Yeah, I, I think it was probably mildly hilarious because of what Johnny Bairstow did. Uh, the protesters obviously went out to make their statement. They had uh, dry powder, so I don't think they were going to damage the pitch. There was already a spare pitch available if there was going to be any damage as well. This is the third time that there's been a spare pitch uh, uh, available because they have been worried about these protesters all the way through this summer. Um, and suddenly a couple of people came onto the ground and then when the orange paint or the orange powder came out, we suddenly realised that it was uh, just off oil. And Johnny Bairstow noticed before anyone else, he went and picked up one of the players. And then on the other side, Ben Stokes and David Warner made sure that no one got anywhere near the pitch. And, after they uh, got a big blow dryer out, it was only a short delay and, and we're on to the cricket and we get a lot of fun with uh, Johnny Besto carrying someone all the way off the ground. Uh, it must be a very small protester, I would say, because he seemed to carry them very easily. Isn't it true that particularly among the Australian team, there's a great deal of sympathy for the views of Just Stop Oil and in fact, they're pretty vocal about that? Yeah, Australian captain Pat Cummins, is, uh, he's talked about climate change a lot. He refused to be involved with uh, one of the sponsors of, of Cricket Australia because they were a, a large polluter in, um, in Australia. And look, all around cricket, you talk to people in South African cricket, they talk about how the pitches are changing. Obviously, places like Gaul, they're worried that eventually that it'll be you know below water level. There's a lot of problems within cricket. When you think about it, it's a summer sport and it's getting a lot hotter everywhere in the world. And so it's getting a lot harder to play cricket because of this. So there's a lot of players who understand this. This is their lived experience. So yeah, I, I think especially within the Australian team, uh, they get a bit of flack for being too woke at times, but they believe that climate change is affecting uh, their lives and cricket as well. So how do you think the Australian team then felt about these protesters being carried off in their prime? Maybe they would have liked to join them on the pitch and throw a bit of orange paint around. I think, I think from that perspective, I think everyone was pretty happy that they could make it to the pitch. Because if they made it to the pitch, that would have been a big delay, I think. This was a, a very small delay. In fact, there was a rain delay not long after. It was probably just this long, maybe even longer than, than this one was. I, I think from the Australian players, I think they would, would say that people have a right to protest. But you do have to remember that there is a player safety issue here as well. I know that Just Stop Oil are you know, normally non-violent. But we have a lot of people that run onto grounds. We've had a lot of people do that of recent times. And players can get injured. Um, although the only way that Johnny Besto was going to get injured was, I don't know, busting a rib from carrying this guy. <laughs> Let me bring Jane in to see what she has to say about what went on today. Hi, Jane. Um, was, it, was it a protest worth throwing? Was it, was it worthwhile? Did it do what you needed it to do? Absolutely. That's why I'm on your show now, Vanessa. We have two problems. One is politicians are not doing enough. The situation is really serious and really urgent, and that's why we need to get their attention. But also the media are not covering this. It, they're not giving the climate crisis the prominence it needs because of the desperately urgent, serious nature of the situation we're in. And so to get on the media, to get our message across and to put pressure on politicians, we absolutely need to disrupt the cricket. And, you know, we don't want to be doing this. We're ordinary people acting out of frustration and desperation. And, and it's great to hear that we have support from Australian cricketers. We have a sister organisation in Australia called Blockade Australia that is campaigning using civil resistance to try and get the Australian government to take radical action on climate. This is a global issue. We all need to come together and all our politicians are failing us. And that's why ordinary people are having to step up and do things like this. Jane, what would you say if I, if I told you I feel two things? One is that we on this programme and on this channel and in this building, which is News UK, where we have The Times and The Sun and The Sunday Times, and we have you know all these different programmes and Virgin Radio and Talk TV and Talk Radio, I feel as if we deal with this subject not simply covering just stop oil protests, but the actual subject of climate change and, and you know, ecology and all the stuff that we need to know about the environment almost every day. I think we talk about it all the time. We cover it hugely. I don't think that it lacks prominence. I don't think it lacks urgency in the way it's covered either. But also, you talking about it and me talking about it and Jared talking about it on the show today, how do we in any way advance your 
course, it's us talking about it again. We're talking about another protest, yes. But how does that influence those who need to be influenced in government to bring about the change that you want to effect? It seems to me we talk about you all the time, it all the time, and nothing fundamental ever really changes. Absolutely. You've hit the nail on the head. The media focus on our tactics and not on the absolute undermine the reason, the fundamental reason why we're doing what we're doing. And, and I agree with King Charles. King Charles said we need to be on a war footing. If we were on a war footing, politicians would be taking the radical action we need to transform our economy and tackle the climate crisis, which will, will kill us all if we don't take that action. And the media would have it front and centre every single day, front page news on every newspaper. If we, if we were in the Second World War, but the BBC would not start the day with a debate over the crumbliness of chocolate, which is what the Radio 4 Today programme did the other week. Shane, you know, I'm going to have to stop you on the crumbliness of chocolate. I'm going to have to stop you there. You know, Jared, you? thank you. Jane, thank you very much indeed. This